This conference will now be recorded. This conference will now be recorded. All right. Good morning, everybody. This is Greg Morton, and it's Sunday, March 6, 2022. This is the weekend update for the Greenville Eastside IBD Meetup Group and the Stockyard Meetup Group. As always, this is for educational purposes only, not recommending any stocks or securities to buy or sell, and all investing has substantial risk of big losses. We want to learn first and only then invest. And of course, Can Slim's the registered trademark of Investor's Business Daily. So topics for today, we'll look at the M factor, talk about current trading plan, going to look at some of the um, charts that were clearly in a bull market that I failed to pick up on timely. And then um, we'll look at our educational monthly meetings, including the agenda for the upcoming meeting. And I've added something new to that that you'll see. So as always, we start with the M, which the market direction or the trend is the most important letter in can slim. As O'Neill research verifies, not an opinion, verified by research, three out of four stocks are gonna follow the general market trend. So we want to diagnose, we want to interpret, we do not want to predict, and O'Neill emphasizes three things, and this is in order of priority. So the action of leading stocks, which of course that's not real good. For as far as the growth sector is concerned, actions of stocks owned still just have two in the group teaching portfolio. And then we'll look at the market pulse, distribution day count, and price and volume on the indexes. So let's get out of here and go over, let's start with the indexes. Let's go to the NASDAQ first, daily chart. Um, so none of this looks good. We're below all four moving average lines, still having heavy selling on down days have the death cross back there. That's a late indicator, but it just confirms the weakness. If we look at a weekly chart on this one, I still view this as we're in the third leg down or working on the third leg down in a bear market. I know some people say this one's too shallow to count as the first leg, but a lot of bears kind of start with a little sideways action. So I count it as leg one. There's no wrong or right answer. This is leg two. And then I see that we're in leg three. And historically, most bear markets have three legs down or more. So that was the NASDAQ. Um, the rest of the indexes are going to be about as bad. Here's the S&P 500. So it's still in correction territory. That red line is 10% um, off the most recent high. Moving average lines are all moving down. 50 hasn't crossed over the 200 yet, but we're below all four moving average lines. So that's not constructive. NYSE um, has not got down, well, it dipped into correction territory. It has never closed down there. Again, all four moving average lines, um, three of them are trending down. These two are not in the correct order. 50 could cross over the 200 day and we're below all four. Dow, same thing, came down, did close in correction territory, is now sort of trying to find support at that range right there, and below all four moving average lines, and also could have the 50 cross over the 200 day there. Russell small cap, um, 50 crossed over the 200 way back here, below all moving average lines, closing solidly, um, in correction territory and even came down and closed in bear market territory back here. S&P 600, 50 has crossed over the 200, um, came back. It's the only one above even one moving average line, which is there. And if we flip over and look at the coloring book, so this week we had um, three distribution days on um, two of the indexes, two on the NASDAQ. These are in white because IBD quits counting distribution days once they go to incorrection, which was over here when they flipped to red. But I keep counting because I want to know how much distribution is, is still on the market. So I'm up to eight in our 25-day window. So that is that is really heavy distribution and just still shows me the, the sellers are sort of in control. Um, I have only nine buying days and 11 selling days in the last 25 day window. We're getting ready to drop off some of those green days this week. We had clustering distribution. Two of these, uh, well, all three indexes had clustering this week, which is four 
at least four distribution days in an eight-day trading window. So that's bad. That's like distribution on steroids. Um, of course, the, the war news is overshadowing everything. And we're only six trading days away from the Fed meeting. So that's sort of the important stuff to look at on there. And if we look at the group teaching portfolio, we only have two positions, only 25% invested and down 8% for the year. So we made a little bit of, of progress primarily because of the um, viable gap up entry in SQM this week, which is working very well. It had a good follow through day and a, um, I mean, a good breakout day and a good um, second day after the breakout day on Friday, high volume and just continued going up. So that's about picture perfect. So that's sort of what we like to see. I guess we can go over to the chart of that real quick. Yeah, so there's the viable gap up breakout day, um, really strong volume, 188%, and then very strong second day. Um, volume's not as high, but that's not unusual, but just two nice top-notch um, strong closing range up 16 percent from the pivot in two days so let's go back here so this week um oops david ryan on ibd live said something which i kind of knew but i think the light bulb went off and i'm paraphrasing he basically said that the growth market is dead to him right now um it's just not working. It's in a bear market. And he really said, you shouldn't even be looking at it. Like these are not part of something that ends up on your top tier buy list after your weekend review. And I knew that, but it really crystallized it when he said it, um, because that was very straightforward. And of course, he's a phenomenal growth stock investor. And then he said a bull market does exist in oil and gas, fertilizers and metals. So if if we shouldn't be investing in growth, it's okay to be out because we're in a correction, but that there is a bull market in these stocks. And I um, noticed that really showed up in the weekend routine this weekend. So I just put them in a list. Look at these, these are the metals and the other ones. Um, we'll go to weekly charts and just focus on, look how much they are from the pivot, 72% from a proper breakout in 12 weeks. And these are these are can slim quality earnings and sales on all of these charts that I'm showing you. So that's Alcoa. This is Alpha, Alpha Metal, um, up 68% from the pivot in eight weeks. Again, phenomenal earnings and sales growth. CF, 60% from pivot, 23 weeks. Century Aluminum, 50% from the pivot in three weeks. Again, strong earnings and sales in the last quarter. 46% um, on arch resources. Tech, getting into commodities, 39% from the pivot in nine weeks. HCC, this is another one of the coal stocks, 35% from the pivot in eight weeks. Chevron, 40% from the pivot in 20 weeks. So all these easily went through just blew past the standard 20% profit goal. Mosaic, we're in fertilizers, 38% from the pivot in eight weeks. McKesson, um, again, sort of in chemical space, 34% from the pivot. That one took a little bit longer. And Exxon Mobil, big cap, 27% from the pivot and, and throwing up can slim numbers all of a sudden. Um, and all these had nice RS lines. Um, they were just strong. So that was just kind of, really brought that home and these all popped up just in my weekend routine and looking at the growth 250 the charts and the paper it's like wow how, how did these get up so far so fast and i failed to participate but it is what it is matt caruso's had some very good um, webinar stuff on youtube interviews he's done ibd live where he's he's laid out his um oil and gas thesis for now and and what happens if oil goes to $150 a barrel and and what some of these stocks perhaps could still do. So you can check that out and and make your own decisions. They look extended to me now. I feel very late to any trade in the oil and gas space, but I may be wrong on that um, also. Let's go back. Okay, so we covered all that. 
Um, so bottom line, I think it's a two-faced market. That we do have a, a bull market in sort of that commodity metals fertilized area. Um, I like what Marilyn Monroe said, if you're going to be two-faced, at least make one of them pretty. So the, the pretty is in the non-growth areas right now. So this was a wild week. We already saw three of the days were distribution days, had a full week of the ongoing war. We've got massive uncertainty driven by the headlines and the market don't like uncertainty. I don't know how it's going to come out. I don't need to know how it's going to come out. I just know the uncertainty produces volatility. You had Russia taking control of a large nuclear plant in Ukraine. Who saw that coming? Um, that headline rattled the market. And there's just massive question marks, sort of, as I said last weekend. So officially, we're in a correction. Um, red light conditions still in the growth stock area, which may mean all or substantially all cash. You saw the group teaching portfolio is only 25% invested and maybe in the rotation areas, but one would think, I would think, go super slow waiting in, um, if even waiting. So each investor has to make their own decision on that. We could have a follow through day at any time. It's just not looking constructive now, particularly with, with all the indexes below those moving average lines. I would, I'll reach out to Justin Nielsen. I don't know if he has any research on the percent of follow through day failures on the follow through days that happen under those moving average lines. I'd be interested to know that. I am seeing a lot more bases set up. Um, than with the follow through day, they might not be non traditional or they're more non traditional growth areas, but they are set up. And then I always I go back to the 2018 bear market, also, which was kind of a typical bear market, a little short, only about four months, but still. So there we had five failed rally days, and then scattered in among those, there were two more failed rally days slash follow through days. So that was a total of seven failures when you add all those together. And it wasn't until the eighth rally day and the third follow through day that it finally worked. And we did have constructive setups when we got to that point. So again, I put this up every weekend right now. Canceling works better when the NASDAQ's trending above an uptrending 50 day SMA line. Canceling works best when the NASDAQ is trending above an uptrending 21 day EMA line. So we're in a very hostile environment now. I had that vary in there two weeks ago. I took it out last weekend. I'm putting it back in. Um, it's very hostile. We are way below better and best, and we're hitting our head hard on best. In fact, the NASDAQ went right up to the 21-day line this week. It just got slammed back down. So you kind of have to ask, what's wrong with just waiting on the 21-day to be line to be conquered before making any significant commitments of our capital in this market. And again, each investor has to make their own decision on that. So charts, um, lots of damage. I've looked at those bulls lately to kind of illustrate that point. Um, just have to keep diligently doing our weekend work, our weekend routine, and there's no doubt it's a grind now. But we will be very prepared when we do get a good follow through day with the right setups. And the worse it gets, um, the better it's going to be when we get to that point and we'll have some good opportunities. So our monthly meetings, we met last on February 8th. Here was the agenda. Um, let's see, what did we walk through? Talked about follow through days, looked at the key question with regard to those. I looked at Reg A mini IPOs, are they heroes or zeros? And gave you my conclusions on that. And then we talked about bottoming basis and what does that mean? And, and I think that IBD was using that term wrong some lately. So we covered that. And in fact, my video on bottoming basis is on the YouTube page also. I snipped that out so you can look at that. Um, and so our next meeting will be Wednesday, March 16th. I had to move it by day. Sorry about that. But um, Miracle Hill Ministries here in Greenville has their annual banquet. And so we're going to that. And so I moved it to Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern. We're going to look at bear market follow through day precedence again and sort of where we are. We'll look at any post analysis in the group teaching portfolio, talk about the IPO, but that market's in hibernation for now while the bear is out. And we'll do an educational segment on the RS line. And then here's what I've added in. We're going, um, and this is sort of different. We haven't done this at one of our meetings. We're going to take a deeper look at the EV market. And then instead of discussing the EV stocks, we're going to talk about the cousin stocks 
which could benefit from this coming trend. And so we're going to look at some of those and, and talk about some opportunities and brainstorm a little bit. So you sign up at the Stockyard Meetup site, tuition is 12 bucks for the monthly meeting. That includes the recording, slide decks, links to any articles I mentioned during the meeting. I send those out to you also. If you don't sign up for the meeting and you want to order all that later, it's 15 bucks. It's easier for me to do it all at once. So I appreciate it if you sign up for the meeting, even if you can't attend. I, I think about two thirds of the people that sign up attend live and, and I know there's people in England and different places that have have time conflicts and that's no problem. And if you're a first time to sign up, I send you a courtesy copy of all the February meeting materials. So here's a list of the prior meetings. If you're interested in any of those, you can reach out to me. If you don't have a set of written cell rules, this is a great time to work on that. I spent a full three months covering that and walking through the different areas on the Market Smith chart. And at the end of that, you easily should have your own set of, of written cell rules to start applying and then do post analysis with them and start tweaking them to become disciplined in the market. And then here's the other educational topics. If you don't have a good weekend routine, September and October covered that in massive detail. This was a um, update and expansion of a meeting I had done probably a year before that. So this one is even even more detailed, talked about how you compare stocks head to head to, to pick the best of the best. And again, that flowed over to um, October a little bit. And then the other ones I've sort of covered and we looked at bear markets extensively in January and how they unfolded some different topics. So here's the contact information. Um, the two meetup sites are the Greenville Eastside IBD meetup site and the Stockyard meetup site. All the resources are on the Greenville Eastside site. Um, color and book, take copy of the group teaching portfolio each weekend. You can just send me an email if you're interested in ordering prior meetings and I'll send you the list and ordering instructions. And then you can look at videos on my YouTube page, which is where you're watching this. So just like and subscribe while you're there. So that's it. I'm out of there. You guys have a great weekend routine.